Okay, we're here in lesson 04 begin. Now in this lesson, we're going to take a look at setting up some of the different options on our active rigid bodies, as well as in our bullet solver. So what I have here at the moment is the same kind of setup we had in the first lesson. And I've added this extra cube back over here. So let's take a look at some of the settings uh, that are available inside of our bullet solver first. The reason we're going to use this first is because there's actually not too much we need to look in here. You can see we can easily turn the simulation on and off and set our start time. Uh, things start to get a little bit stranger after that. We have this option called split impulse. Unlike other dynamics inside of Maya, especially the classic ones, um, Bullet doesn't mind interpenetration. If we have this problem here and hit play, you can see it just pushes the objects apart and it'll go ahead and proceed with uh, the rest of the simulation. I'm gonna let this run through so that we don't have that uh, weird uh, error with the shifting cubes over there. So you can see it just pushes the two apart. I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter with just 100 frames. Now, this could be a problem. Yes, it's separating the two, but let's say you had a building you put together. You don't want it to fly apart just because two bricks were touching. This bullet solver uh, split impulse node will basically separate uh, the velocity from the solver it uses to separate these two out. And you can see, as soon as it plays through there, let's let it come back around now. It basically just pushes the two apart without adding any extra velocity. So I'll go ahead and shut that off. Next we have solver acceleration. Uh, this is going to use open computing language uh, with either your video card, that's your GPU, or your CPU to speed up simulations. I always wondered how come whenever I turn on my GPU simulation it doesn't seem to make a difference. That's because I recently found out it actually only affects uh, soft bodies. So uh, it's up to you. You can turn it on if you want. Um, Maybe just because I secretly think it's still doing something, I usually keep my open uh, CL GPU acceleration on. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, maybe one day it will affect uh, regular rigid objects, not just the soft bodies. Now it gets a little more confusing. Internal fixed frame rate. This is actually going to be what we're going to use to improve the quality of our simulation. Now, because this is intended for real time use, we can't tell it just to calculate a certain amount of times between frames. Number one, that could definitely slow it down so it doesn't function in real time. And number two, uh, what happens when the frame rate changes? What if the game runs at 25 frames and then 60 frames? That causes issues. So instead, it basically runs on an internal fixed frame rate and we just choose the hertz, 60 hertz, 120 hertz, or 240 hertz. So basically 60 hertz works pretty well for most simulations. If you find that you have very fast moving objects, you might want to increase this. An example would be when we were changing our gravity. So if I wanted to get the realistic gravity here for centimeters and change this to 980, we had that issue where everything basically went crazy and vibrates all over the floor here. So because it's moving so quickly, the internal frame rate's not keeping up. We could try 120 hertz, see how that works. And you could see it's a little better, but they're still jittering quite a bit. So now we can go all the way up to 240 hertz, and we're probably going to fix that problem. You could see now they're no longer jittering. So that's how that works. It's definitely the thing you want to use for any fast moving objects. The max number of iterations is kind of a cap on how many calculations it can do for each step. Uh, you can put this higher and higher if you want, uh, just as the kind of uh, mouse over here says, 10 works for most situations. On rare occasion, I've gone ahead and increased it. Over here, we've already discussed the ground plane. The default ground plane, I believe, is 0.5 for friction, 0.9 for restitution, which is the bounce. If you don't like that, don't use the ground plane and just use a box. They actually don't give us access to change this yet. Over here, we have our gravity. We've already discussed that. We also have wind, but wind only works again with soft body objects over here. Now you can use Maya fields, that's these fields over here, 
But you have to keep in mind when you select this, it shuts off the built-in gravity, so you will have to add in your own gravity over here. Just something to keep in mind. Those are really the important settings we need to know inside of our solver. Inside of the actual uh, objects over here, uh, actual, just objects, I guess, uh, we have to take a look at this bullet rigid body shape node in order to adjust properties for each individual rigid body. I'm going to go ahead and just for right now put this back to negative 98 and we can just go back to 60 hertz just to be a little bit quicker. So most of this stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, you've probably worked with mass before. Keep in mind more mass does not make something necessarily fall faster. Uh, we have damping, uh, which will slow down the object's motion over time for both linear and angular, so for slide in for rotations. We have friction and we have restitution. Restitution is bounce. So very straightforward if you've worked with any other kinds of dynamics in the past. Under initial conditions over here, this is where we can basically have this object from the first frame maybe have some motion. So if I want it to fly towards these objects, let's have it fly in the Z. I'll give it an initial velocity of maybe 50 in the Z over there. And you can see it now flies forward. Maybe a bit more. Let's try 150. And you can see it hits them, but can't really go very far. Chances are there's not enough mass. If all of these have a mass of 1 and this has a mass of 1, it can't really get through those. So let's give it maybe a mass of 10. And you can see now it can start to push through those objects. Now you'll see down here there's an option called initially sleeping. Whenever a bullet objects stop moving, they actually go to sleep. It helps save on calculation time, that way they also don't jitter around on the floor. We can actually start a simulation with that action right off the bat. I can grab this guy here and say initially sleeping, and you can see, whoops, we'll let it play through once, make sure it actually does that. Well, that didn't work. Let's make sure that is on. It might be touching another object. I'm going to move it up a little bit higher away from them. There we go. It was just too close to them. So, and this object won't actually react until the rest of these objects, or any object, has some sort of collision with it. So if this guy's up over here, you can see it'll start to react after that. We'll wait for it to run through once here. And there we go. So that's what initially sleeping is. It allows the objects to start static. So again, fairly straightforward. Now we have some other settings here. Uh, impulse forces are not like initial forces. Initial forces basically offer an initial push, and then it's not going to uh, move anymore after that. Just lets velocity take over. An impulse force will continue pushing through. So if I were to shut this off over here, and let's say give it just one in the impulse, you can see the object is going to attempt to start moving forward. Now, right now it looks like the uh, uh, friction and gravity is overcoming the impulse, but we can just put it higher. Let's put it at 50, and you can see that object is trying to push its way through because of that impulse force. Keeps pushing and pushing. So again, Fairly straightforward. You can also do that with uh, rotations with the torque. Uh, you can also do initial rotations as well with initial angular velocity. So if I were to go back and let's say, oops, over here, put this back to 150, I can also give it some rotation maybe in the X of maybe 300 degrees. And you can see now the object kind of spins as it flies forward. So, and that's really the important stuff here. Uh, collider properties, we've already discussed this. Uh, the only thing we really haven't talked about is collider shape margin. We'll talk about that in the future though. So uh, that's pretty much a look at uh, working with our solver as well as working with the basic options for our rigid bodies. In the next lesson, we're gonna take a look at working with rigid sets. And once we've done that, we're pretty much done looking at the basics of Bullet in general, and we'll be able to start our project. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson.